Yo YouTube, what's going on? You already know who it is, your boy Cray, and in today's Rogue Company video, ooh, do I got something for you all, okay? Today we're gonna talk about how to get your mind right for Ranked. Now, at the time of me releasing this video, Ranked is quote unquote, allegedly supposed to be releasing tomorrow, November 4th, 2020. And I say allegedly because that's pretty much what everybody has assumed because the lead developer, Scott Gandhi, mentioned last week that we talk about Ranked this week. So everybody's assuming so. I'm not sure if data miners found anything that would tip us off in regards to it or not. But anyways, everybody's expecting it to come out tomorrow, right? Now, I will let you guys know, disclaimer, if it doesn't drop tomorrow, don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at other YouTubers like Diehard, GG, It's Benny, people like us, and don't be mad at the developers. Why? Because they are trying to perfect a product, okay? No, it takes time, especially during this worldwide pandemic. So have patience, be excited, but have patience. Please, 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 okay, disclaimer over. Again, we're talking about how to get your mind right for Ranked and Rogue Company. And this video is just inspired because everybody is trying to figure out what the heck they're going to do when it comes to playing Ranked and Rogue Company, like who their squad is going to be, like how they how do they prepare, things of that nature, right? So this guide will give you a little bit of a preparation per se. Now, I will say if you end up enjoying this guide, please do me the biggest favor, slap that like button, hit that sub button down below. It'll help your boy out so, so much. Over 90% of you guys watching these videos are not subscribed. I'm going to start karate chopping y'all in the earlobe if y'all don't start hitting that sub button. I got a nice little sub overlay too. So check that out. Like it. Sub. All that beautiful stuff. All right. My passive aggressiveness is over. Now let's move into the meat and potatoes. Let's start talking about how to get your mind right. Okay. Let me backtrack just a little bit before I dive in. Okay. These cues or these mental notes can be put into play and of course sweaty games of demolition right now every game isn't sweaty there are some games of demolition that you can win just potatoing around running around being silly right I'm saying no sweaty sweaty games or if you're in certain esports road company discords I know there's several of them out now. If you're in those type of discords and you're screaming with people this is where these mental tips or these mental thoughts or whatever you want to reference to mass apply okay so now back on track here thing number one that we can do that you can do to get ready for ranked is learn how to evaluate your opponent okay now i'm not just saying in a simple standpoint learn your opponent in and out and i will say this can be done typically in the first round or two whether if you're on the attack if you're on the defense learn every single opponent have your teammates give you call outs on what the opposing players are doing you know if there's a lancer on the team and a lancer's playing passive you need to know that if there's a dallas on the team and the dallas is sitting way back with a devotion dmr and he's the last line of defense you need to know that if anvil's running point right away dropping down his shield you need to know that you need to see how these people play because throughout the rounds you're going to need to learn how to counter that you're going to need to learn how to counterplay that okay now this is what i mean so i'm getting ready to drop a map up on the screen if everything works out correctly it'll be a map of the arena dr disrespects map okay and this was his rough draft but pretty much every map here in rogue company is a three lane map okay that means there's an a lane b lane and c lane for lack of better terms they can be vertical or they can be horizontal okay vertical three lane maps like sky fell of course and the horizontal three line maps like the arena okay so again a line can be the line what the heck i'm like why does that sound wrong lane okay <laughs> a lane can be the lane that's furthest left b lane is the mid lane and c lane is the furthest right okay so let's say for example you're three rounds in and the lancer has flanked through a lane three times in a row okay now we have to be expected of that lancer hitting that type of flank you know you should be there waiting for that lancer to put her in the dirt okay learn how to counterplay that or if you're rocking anvil maybe if you put your shield up in the doctor disrespect locker room and you block that flank now she has to make a different move now you're forcing her to cut out of that a lane to go b lane and maybe she runs into the next line of defense okay you, you see what i'm saying here i know i'm kind of rambling and blah 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 in a little bit but i think you guys are picking up what i'm putting down you got to learn how to counterplay that on the fly too right because again if you don't learn that in the first two rounds or so chances are if you go down 0-2 you might not come back especially once a team gets momentum once a team puts your back against the wall you coming back from that 
chances are very, very slim. I mean, it happens. It does happen. But come on. I'm talking from a competitive sense because remember, the opposing team is learning you as well. So the goal is overall to play chess, learn their play style, counterplay that to the best of your ability and put them fools in the dirt. Some of the best teams to fight are the most aggressive teams because typically what they start to do is they start to break off, right? So again, let's pretend the Lancer is hitting that A-lane flank. You're waiting on her. You put her in the dirt because she isn't even expecting you. Now it's a 3v4. And typically whenever a team does something like that or they play aggressive, they start to panic, right? Because their first line of offense or defense, whatever, depending if they're attacking or defending, is gone eliminate it because lancer is probably the top aggressive player in the game i would say yes yeah, i would say she's in front of chalk who else plays pretty aggressive some people play dahlia aggressive some people play glitch aggressive you know but the top two aggressive players because of their abilities are chalk and lancer right so let's pretend the opposing team has a dallas lancer chalk and phantom right you put down that Lancer. Now the Chalk is the first line of attack or defense. You put down Chalk because Chalk's playing aggressive. Now it's a 2v4. Now all they have is a Dallas in the back of the map with a Devotion and the freaking Phantom in the back with her Sniper. That's an easy clap, right? A 4v2 in that situation. Unless the Phantom is just God tier, which... <laughs> Goodness gracious, that's a video for another day. But yo... Nine times out of 10, you're gonna win that fight, okay? So learn how to counterplay. Take the time to evaluate your opponents and put them down. Tip number two for getting your mind right. You gotta know your role and you have to stick to it for the remainder of the game. Now, I'll use myself as an example. Everybody on this channel knows I play Vi like there's no tomorrow. I am the number one Vi player in the entire universe. I'm lying, but in my head I am, right? I have to know my role. Know that your role is not assigned until the match has began and you are a round or two in. There are games where I have to play the aggressor as Vi because my comrades might have chose different agents or that's just the way the game is speculating because our Lancer can't get the work done because they're cutting off her flank so she becomes inefficient. Our Dallas is just kind of chilling, holding midpoint. Our Scorch or our Ronin can't really hold it down by herself, so I have to play a little bit more aggressive. And on the flip side, there are times where I have to play the last line of defense. You know what I'm saying? Because we have that Ronin pushing. We have that Lancer pushing. If one of them go down or if they both go down, I am comfortable enough in handicap situations that I can hold my own. So there are plenty of times where I am the last line of defense and I'm good with that, right? That's my role for that specific match. Know that your roles will change over time as well because, again, it's all depending on who you're playing against. So really knowing your role is important. Don't be a saint and play aggressive. That is foolish. That is so, so foolish. You are the medic. Play support. Play midline defense. You know what I'm saying? Or play the last line of defense. Don't be trying to run Saint and be aggressive, right? Or if you're in my situation, if you're playing Vi and you have assumed the role of the last line of defense, don't try to step out of that boundary. Because when you do, you get put down and now your team is handicapped. So now if that Lancer or Ronin on your team goes down, it is now a 4v2 that Dallas that's left over can't defend themselves and that remaining aggressive rogue cannot defend themselves anymore. You see what I'm saying? Like, know your role. Stick to it. It is okay. It is okay to not be on top with kills and elims. It is a-okay for a game or two to do that. Know your time is coming. But for this game, rolling right now, you got to know your role. Okay? Get it? Got it? Good. And lastly, my last tip. To get your mind right to build off of what i was saying before it's to make smart decisions man come on it's to make smart decisions now <laughs> i know you guys like myself have ran into those t i call them ttvers okay or youtubers now i'm the pot calling the kettle black because i have youtube or i have yt in my username but we run into them they always want to be on top of the leaderboards they always want to pub stomp they don't care about objective they don't care about planting bombs they don't care about strategy they just want to get 40 elims or 40 downs lead the room and feel all cool so they can post <laughs> their clips to twitter and instagram right we've ran into people like that typically if you're playing ranked you're not solo queuing some people do and if you solo queue i commend you and i I give you the utmost respect because I could never do that. I just, I just couldn't, you know, I'll be honest. It's, ah, nah, forget about it. But typically you're queuing in with a four stack, at, at least a three stack, right? 
overall you have to make smart decisions when you're playing ranked know that ranked will have a true skill system which means when you win you get points you have the opportunity to rank up when you lose you lose points it's very simple it kind of reminds you of the old halo stuff back in the day right so if we're being stupid and we're pushing every single fight. We get somebody down to one bullet and we fly in there and we fly into a nest of bees and get clapped and put our team at a handicap because now we're one man down. We're only screwing ourselves up and our entire team up. Be smart, let that guy go, let that guy heal up and let that guy remember that you mean business because I promise you, there are so many gunfights that I leave somebody one shot they heal up and stuff, but they don't want to come across me again because they know I will clap them if I get another opportunity, right? Because they got my health down to 50 and I got their health down to one or two HP. You know what I mean? It's a mental game. When you put somebody in that position, you are now beating them mentally, even though you guys are back even killed because your health went back to 100 and they went back to 100, right? But you're winning the mental battle. So think about it in that regards. Make smart decisions. Don't push fights if you don't need to. The objective is to plant the bomb, watch the bomb until it goes kablooey, right? Or it's defend site A or B. If somebody plants a bomb, you disarm it. You are probably forced to engage in that regard. But you see what I'm saying? Like, when you think about it from that standpoint, rather than, oh, I gotta kill all four of these dudes and wipe the round so I could put the clip on Twitter or put it on TikTok and put some fancy music behind it. When you think about it like that, you will not get out of bronze tier and ranked. I'm sorry, you just won't. And that's the reality of the situation. But when you think about playing with your teammates cohesively, you think about even taking the brunt of it or taking the back seat and being at the bottom of the chart like that's fine being at the bottom of the chart is fine i will rather be at the bottom of my team in kills and elims and win the game and rank up to rogue versus me be at the top every time we lose and i'm stuck in bronze or silver you know like at that point it's just the ego thing and you got to put your ego aside because when rank comes it's gonna get sweaty it's gonna get crazy and you're gonna have to rely on your homies more than ever before so come on let's make smart decisions please please i beg you i don't want to have to 7 0 everybody in rank because best believe i'm going to try to if i see you i'm clapping those cheeks so you better watch this video and you better have listened to what i had to say because if you listened you might have a chance but chances are i'm not giving you a chance crap talking over i'm done joking i'm done ranting yo again if you enjoyed this video if this was helpful in any way shape or form do me the biggest favor in the world you know like comment down below if this was helpful if this wasn't if you have any more tips to help people get their mind right again comment them down below all that beautiful stuff it's your boy cray we out i will catch you in the next one peace